a USB rechargeable electronic lemon sterilizer for your fridge. It doesn't sterilize lemons, I mean, technically speaking, I suppose it does sterilize lemons, it's just lemon themed. Came in a nice box. It's notable that uh, it's available in the yellow, the green, or white. And uh, it goes under various brands. This one's one sold, but it's also sold an, under the brand 3 Life and also Xiaomi. But they say it's part of the ecological chain product, so it doesn't have the Xiaomi logo on it. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe it's just they allow them to use the logo. But the idea is you press this button, and after a couple of seconds, it energizes. And I'll hold that. Uh, can you see it? Uh, yes, you can see it's flashing green. And it goes on at low level and it will last for 14 days in a charge apparently. Press it again, it goes into blue mode and it will run for longer periods of time. Flashes the blue light. If you press it again, it switches back to the green mode. If you press and hold, it goes off and I can already smell ozone. Lots of ozone. This O-ring was to stop it rolling about all over the place. Oh, it's still running. I've switched into other mode. Oh, I'll tell you what, you can hear it then. Uh, it's hissing and making sort of motory noises. This thing stinks. Uh, it puts out quite a lot of ozone. It comes with instructions in Chinese and English. They're not too bad. Usual disclaimers. It doesn't really tell you an awful lot, really, other than, you know, turn it on and off. And it's got a USB port. I shall turn this off before I over-ozonate the place. It's got a USB port in the bottom. USB-C, if I can get this out with my lack of fingernails. Little thing that pops down. USB-C connector. When it's charging, it lights uh, red to show it's charging, green when it's finished charging. The usual thing. Now, how do I open this? I thought the top might unscrew in some way or it might pop off, but it's not popping off. I get the feeling I'm going to have to put the spudger down here and try and prise the top bit out here. I could be wrong here. Maybe it's glued. Maybe I'm just going to break it. Oh, this doesn't feel good. Oh, I've already scratched. It's lovely chromium finish. That's just what's going to happen then. Is it going to come out there? Am I going to pause while I try and get this out? Am I going to bend my spudger? Am I going to snap my spudger? I'm not sure. This is not looking promising. I don't know how this comes apart. I may have to use brute force and keep in mind the whole point of this channel is to take these things apart. So if I break my lemon, if I break my lemon, then, you know, at least it might save you breaking yours. Right. Tell you what, let's just get brute force and go under here and press it. Up. It's popped off. Uh, how was that held on? Uh, I can't really see how it was held on. Oh, it's clips. It is little clips down here. So that is how it comes off. What do we see here? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I've not seen one quite like that before. There's a little fan. Let me zoom down in this. Here's the high voltage power supply. It's not a very big high voltage power supply, but it certainly does the job. Let's turn this on. It says 5 volt DC. I wonder if they're actually running it direct from the battery or if it is 5 volts. There's a little fan there. And here is the ozone plate. Are you going to be able to see anything here? I can hear it hissing, but I can't see anything. Tell you what, uh, I shall uh, take the exposure off. I shall turn the light off and we'll see. Oh, there, there we go. There is, hold on, let's uh, focus down that. Is it going to focus on that? There is our ozone discharge on that little plate. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to bring the lighting back. Watch your eyes. So what's odd about this little ceramic ozone plate is it's dark ceramic. They're usually a sort of pale white ceramic. And it's the one that will have the little electrode in the front and the larger electrode in the back. Can I get this out? Is it glued in? I think it is glued in, not really sure. Let's try not to break it, though, to be honest, it's not like I've got a shortage of ozone-producing devices. I think that's glued in, so there's a risk it's going to break. But the idea is that it's a layer of ceramic with a, an electrode on either side, and they capacitively couple, and you get the corona discharge forming around that, and it gives the purple discharge, and that creates the ozone. Quite odd that the fan is just blowing this way, because uh, it should be blowing across the surface of that for best effect. But I guess they're just using it to swirl the air around in its vicinity. It certainly does the job of producing ozone. This is how this comes out now that I've chowed all around the edge. There are screws down here. Let's see what sort of battery it is. If it's an 18650R, a little pouch cell. Claims to be about 2,500 milliamp power. I love uh, one of the adverts for this has a picture telling you how to use the button. It's very helpful. 
it says, it shows a very distended image of the thing, it says, lemon sterilis, one button start. It's very practical to make it simple. Single key switch to switch gears. Bid farewell to tediousness and free hands. And I have to say I did not experience any tediousness pushing the button. I didn't really experience much pushing the button, quite frankly. Uh, I keep pushing the button. This, that, that. Oh, it's an 18650. So, so, it does have the potential for enhancement. I'll tell you what. Let's, oh, that unplugs. This is better. There's a little USB connector in the bottom. Uh, and here is the circuitry. What's the bet that this is the charge control chip, TP4056 or something like that, and this will be a microcontroller? They've got separate connectors out here. I wonder if that's a, I wonder if that's a power bank chip and it's putting 5 volts out. We shall find out. I can unplug the battery. That's a good idea. Actually, is it a good idea? Because I should have tested that beforehand. Right, tell you what. I'm going to whip the circuit board out so we can take a look at it. Looks like it's single-sided, and then we can explore the circuitry and see how it's configured. The reverse engineering has been done. Let's explore the circuitry. Things worthy of note, uh, to comply with the USB-C standard, they've got two 5.1K resistors down here. It's also quite a nice arrangement. That circuit board for the connector is actually slotted into a little guide track there, but then there's a screw that clamps it down to make sure that even when that's being plugged in quite forcibly, it can't really push it out of place. It's quite snug. It also fits the uh, the way they moulded this. The chromium top has a little baffle in here to ensure that uh, air is drawn in this side. The baffle stops it just basically swirling around inside and then it pushes it past the ozone plate, which is a little support here that just pushes on the edge of that plate to keep it in position in the unit. It's also interesting to note on this circuit that it's all surface mount on top, uh, but... There is one surface mount component underneath. That's the only one, and it's a little LED. Let me actually zoom down in this, because uh, that would work better. You can see the circuit better if I do that. But if I plug this in, you'll see there's an LED here, here, and one underneath. And you'll see that just going to do a wee self-test, and I plug this in. So I plug it in. They light up brightly, and then they go out again. So each of those... LEDs can actually do red, green, and blue, and they're all just in parallel with these resistors uh, going over to the chip. Let's explore the circuitry. The uh, USB port connection comes in here, and it's a standard range. It's got a TP4056 uh, uh, charge control chip uh, charging lithium cell over here. The lithium cell also has another chip called an XB5352A, which is a dedicated protection chip. It's basically like a DW01 and MOSFETs all just crammed into one package. And uh, this monitors the voltage across the cell using a little, simple res resistive and capacitor sort of uh, filter just to make sure it's got a nice stable voltage. Um, and then it decides if the voltage goes too high, it will cut the cell off. And if it goes too low, it will cut the cell off. Uh, in this case, the upper charge limit should be dealt with by the TP4056. So the lower charge limit thing will be useful for just cutting it off once the actual the battery is running low. There is the ubiquitous little microcontroller here with a programming port. It controls the LEDs via these 100 ohm resistors. It controls the MOSFETs, uh, switch them directly with 10K resistors to make sure they're always pulled off and it provides a positive signal to them to turn on. One of the MOSFETs, an AO7T, controls the module, the ozone module, which has a back EMF diode across it. The other MOSFET, because it's just controlling a small fan, to be honest, they could have used both the identical ones, but they've used an A006 MOSFET for that. I've not really come across that one much before. Um, anything else to say about this? Let's go straight to the schematic. I shall zoom up just a tiny bit more. Not too much. So here's the USB-C port coming in here. It goes via a 0.1 ohm resistor and then there's a capacitor. This is just part of the data sheet for TP4056. It seems to, to protect against uh, a sudden spike of current. Uh, there's a voltage divider, and this is where I'm getting deja vu from other ozone units. Very similar. I get the feeling they're probably from the same factory or the same designer. But they've got a voltage divider in the 5 volts to give a signal to this chip to tell it that it's the USB is plugged in. It also... 
and there's an excess resistor here. It's very odd. These uh, pins in the TP4056 would normally show charging and standby once it's fully charged. The standby one, they've got two resistors pulling up to the 5 volt rail, which uh, technically speaking means that they've, they're putting, well, current limited, but 5 volts down to this chip. Um, but when it's uh, fully charged, it pulls that low so that when the chip sees that pin go low, it knows, uh, and it's seeing power here, it can switch to green and say the battery is charged. That then goes across to the lithium cell with its protection here. So this is going to be zero volt down here. I shall also draw that little uh, that little usual symbol you put down there for ground rails to show that that is connected to that. And this will be, let's say, plus 4.2 volts. Uh, interesting to note the ozone module is powered straight from the battery, which means that when it's down about the 3 volt region, uh, this is a 5 volt module in this. It may do what some of the other ones do and actually dwindle off an output. I'm not really sure. The microcontroller has a switch pulling to the 0 volt rail uh, to basically turn it on, set the, the mode. It's got the three 100 ohm resistors driving the LEDs. And then it's got the two outputs driving the MOSFETs, one for the fan and one for the ozone module with its uh, back EMF protection diode that they've just added, presumably just as a, a precaution. The A006 I have found as an SI2300. The A017 is an A03400. Um, very popular MOSFET. Well, this A006 I'm not so sure about. I haven't really come across that one much before. Uh, what else? The two 10K resistors that pull the gates of the MOSFETs to the zero volt rail just to actually make sure they stay off until they're given a signal to turn on. That is about it. There's not much else. It's a very simple circuit, very straightforward, quite a stylish thing. I'm just going to zoom back out here. Um, I think the style of this is the most appealing feature. But when it comes to the crunch, there's not a lot of difference between this, the circuitry-wise, and the function, and uh, many of the other devices. The other modules that I, I can recall using very similar circuitry were the ones that had the little metal spike behind a ring. But this, it's nice that they've got the little fan in here uh, for to blow air past, and this strange dark ceramic plate. Very odd. Nice that they actually put a decent cell. It is marked 2,500 milliamp power. But that's it. It's a logical little device. It uh, does what it says in the tin. It's got that little button selecting the flashing green mode and that's the point at which the fan is running. I'd guess that the main difference between the green and blue mode is that uh, it will run for a different length of time on a sort of regular cycle. Uh, but these things work. I've had a ozone generator in my fridge for a while and it keeps it very fresh smelly inside. It also makes food last a lot longer in the fridge because it stops like mold growing on the sort of cheese and stuff like that. And uh, it seems to keep the, the salad and stuff fresh. But there we go. It's an interesting device, very stylish. This is stinking of ozone now. It is working very well. Uh, I'll press that and it will go to the blue mode. The blue LEDs were notably a lot dimmer than the green, though they usually are. Uh, but there we go. Interesting stuff. Uh, nice little unit, quite, it's very stylish, but that's how it comes to bits. You have to pop the chrome cover off, and then there's the three screws that actually lift this from the base, uh, just in case you get the urge to take yours to bits. Um, that's how you do it. But there we go. Very neat little device, looks very smart, looks very Japanese, and the circuitry is logical.